what happens on this boat to Rome? That's what we're going to find out next in X-27. Oh boy, I watched a bunch of videos about this, so it's kind of interesting. Someone was able to go through and try to validate all the things that is about to happen on this boat to Rome. I mentioned before that there's a good traveling season on the Mediterranean and a bad traveling season on the Mediterranean. For being a sea and not the ocean, it is treacherous to travel in. And so there's places where there are washed up uh, boat wrecks all over the place, but we're going to find out what happens to it. So they decided that they were going to set sail for Italy and deliver Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort. Remember, we heard that cohorts was a small group of soldiers. And this guy's name was Julius. So he belonged to basically a imperial regiment. And so they boarded the ship and they got on and they sailed along the coast of Asia, Turkey. And they put to sea, and we're going to go through all the places, but Macedonia and Thessalonia, and then they ended up in Sidon. And Julius, it says, treated Paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends, be cared for, and then put out for sea for Cyprus. So it it was loud to, you know, see some people he knew in the area. That was very nice of him. And again, we use that word that we put out to sea, which also means that Luke was with Paul. So they go on this voyage and they go to the various places. They were sailing by Cyprus and then uh, the winds were against them. And they went into the open sea where near where Paul was from, that Cilicia and Pamphylia. That's where the pamphlets come from. I'm just kidding. They didn't come from there. And went to Lycia. And the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing for Italy. So they went on board to that ship and we sailed for a couple of days, it says. So they're talking about all these locations, Crete, we know about Crete, where that is, and coasting along the uh, shore with difficulty. And they came to a place called Fairhaven. And this interesting place of Fairhaven sounds lovely, right? Fairhaven. But it wasn't a very good city. It wasn't a place that you wanted to stay for very long. You weren't going to have much of a life being there. I think it just sounded like it was small and it didn't have much supplies. Now so much time had passed, it was dangerous to go. And even Paul himself said that it was, it, was too, um, it was too dangerous to leave. That if we go out, there's going to be injury and loss of life and cargo. And the centurion, it said, paid more attention to the pilot and the owner of the ship than Paul. Now, he probably didn't know that Paul had traveled a lot and knew a lot about traveling. But, you know, the pilot and the owner of the ship going to have this vested interest. So he listened to them instead of Paul, even though Paul had a good amount of experience. Now, all this was happening, it said, during the fast, which which is going to be the Day of Atonement, where you fasted and apologized. You know, it's it's, it's a making up for your sin. It's right before the Jewish New Year. So this is going to be September to October timeframe. And that's late, you know, it's so close to that winter storm season. And sailing didn't happen very much at that time because it was considered to be so dangerous to do. Fairhaven, again, like I said, was not a place that you probably wanted to spend a lot of time. And they thought that they could go another 50, 60 miles and get to a better place to stay. And so then the winds uh, were blowing gently. So they weighed anchor along creek close to the shore. But then a big storm came. Nor'easter struck down from land, it says, and the ship was caught And even though they were anchored, it couldn't face the wind. It was just getting tossed around. So they managed to secure the boat, hoisting it up. And I'm not going to go through all the sea stuff, but basically they were worried it was going to run aground. And it was just violently getting thrown. And so they begin to start throwing all the cargo off in hopes of saving their own lives. And they threw the ship's tackle, it says, overboard with their own hands. And neither sun nor star appeared for many days. It was so stormy. We, you know, didn't even see the sky anymore. It was so dangerous. And that's where this guy on YouTube went through and explained how the storms worked in the Mediterranean and said, this is plausible. And knowing what year it is and knowing when it was, a storm was there and where they got stuck was absolutely a bad place to get stuck. So he tried to trace the whole boat experience. 
And so then Paul stands up and says, you know, you should have listened to me, which is not what anybody wants to hear and not set sail from Crete because now we're going to have all this injury and loss. But take heart because no one's going to die. You're going to lose your ship. Angel of the Lord told me, don't be afraid. You're going to stand by Caesar, right? You're going to live because you have to go to Rome. So don't worry about it because we're all going to live. So take heart. It's fine. We're just going to lose the ship. But we must run aground on some island. And so it says on a 14th night, they were across the Adriatic Sea. That's going to be towards um, the sea in between Greece area. And they thought that they were nearing land. Oh, and then it said that the sailors were looking to get away from the ship. They, and, and, you know, they didn't sign up for this. They didn't want this storm. So they lowered the ship boat into the sea, pretending that they were just trying to, you know, anchor it, from, you know, from the bow. But Paul tells the centurion, who had been nice to him and the soldiers, you know, yeah, unless these men stay in the ship, we cannot be saved. So then the soldiers cut away the ropes and let the boats go. And so that way, <laughs> which is kind of a fun trick. So people were mentioning, first of all, how good Luke was about writing about seafaring things, because he probably spent a good amount of deal on his own ships. But how Paul, the prisoner, is really being encouraging leading people, telling them what they had to do in order to survive. So he was there to make sure that everything goes well. So it got to dawn and Paul encouraged them to eat. And it's the 14th day that they had been doing this and they hadn't had food. And so he said, you know, let's go eat. We need it for our strength. Don't worry. No one's going to die in this. I have to get to Rome because God told me so. So they all start to eat and they were encouraged. Certainly eating a good meal uh, feels good. And it says that there were 276 people on the ship. And when they ate enough, it lightened the ship. And then they threw all the wheat into the sea to lighten the ship even more. Oh, but goodness. So now it said that that day they didn't recognize the land. They didn't know where the beach was that they were running the ship ashore. So they cast the anchors out, left them in the sea and loosened the ropes made it to the beach. So they ran the ship into the ground. That's what they had to do. They struck the reef and it said that the ship was now immovable. The, the stern was broken up by the surfs. And so then the, said the soldiers planned to kill the prisoners lest any of them should try to escape. But the centurion, wishing to keep Paul safe from caring from this whole plot, he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard and make for land rest the planks on the ground. And so they were all brought to the land safely. The centurion has been given this consideration, told, probably told, protect this Paul's life because he's a citizen. He's been treated very poorly. He wants to talk to the emperor. And he kept Paul safe. I mean, this is really good news. He did everything he could to keep Paul safe. And so it said that Paul had reached land and this was the fourth time Paul had been shipwrecked. We're going to hear more about it in 2 Corinthians. Oh boy. So now his life is safe and that ends Acts 27. Interesting how this horrible situation, Paul was remaining in leadership, but he knew they shouldn't travel. They didn't listen to him. But even though you could have just sat back and said, well, no one listens to me. I'm just going to let them do what they want. But Paul was still being encouraging giving him good advice and letting him know what he had heard from the angel of the Lord about how that no life is going to be lost. So he was able to help the people on the boat all survive and make it to the beach. What I'm going to pray about is in those times when we feel danger on every side, boy, this is a really scary situation. Luke did a great job of describing it, and I covered over a lot of the points. This was really dangerous, and this was a dangerous time. And Paul held it together. And so what I pray is that God gives me that stability to look this kind of danger in the face and keep faith and keep encouraging other people, even though I might be scared too. And what I'm going to tell others is the fact that we can trust in God that whatever happens, good or bad, whether we would get lost in a shipwreck, I mean, I don't know how many of us get onto ships or saved in a shipwreck, it's all within God's plans. And we can have faith that whatever happens, we are in God's protection either way, either in this life or the next. I know that doesn't sound encouraging at times, but we always have to have that faith that God 
is with us, whether we shipwreck, whether we lose our life or we keep our lives, he is always sitting there right next to us. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. We are almost done with Acts. Next podcast, we are going to be done with Acts. So please remember, you can email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I would love to hear from you and love to hear, was I right? Was I wrong? Did I have an opinion that made you think? Or did you have a different point of view? I would love to hear it all. Thanks so much and have a great day.